I think a lot of people who watch my channel might not even understand what centralized logging is or really understand the concept of logging, but logging is one of the, the main ways that you can get information on a production system when stuff starts going wrong, right? Um, typically, when you have a logger, for example, I'm using Winston in my code over here. Winston has the ability to basically log out using log levels, right? So you can log out with info levels, error levels, debug levels, etc. And all of those log levels can be filtered at a later point. So you can find just the things that are errors or just the things that are info or debug, etc. And then typically in your code, you do like logger dot, I don't know, error, or you do logger dot debug. You wouldn't actually do console logs anywhere. You don't want to do console logs when you're using an actual like logging framework or library. You'd actually specify what is the log level of the thing you're trying to produce. Um, usually there's like debug, error, trace, whatever. But the reason you do this is so that you can actually have a centralized logger and you can parse through the things that are actually important to you. So let's take a step back real quick. What is a centralized logger? It's basically a place that aggregates the logs from all of your systems, right? All of your services, whatever you want to call it. So let's say you have an express service over here. It's producing some logs. You have another service over here. It's producing some logs. And then of course you have a third service over here that's producing some logs. Now, if you're going to be hosting all these things on their, your own like VPS, the only way to know if this system is having issues is you have to like SSH into this machine and then you have to go and tail the logs or just, you know, use grep over the logs and try to find specific things that are interesting to you. Obviously, it's not a good approach when you start having more machines, right? And especially if you have a larger system that needs to scale, you can't just SSH into all those machines and find what you need. So what a centralized logger allows you to do is as your systems are generating these different logs that I talked about, these are going to be shipped over to the centralized logger. And in this video, I'm going to talk about the Elk stack, but there's tons of different um, logging systems out there where you have a nice UI where you can go and dive into logs and figure out what's going on. So to also give some context, typically on larger systems, you might have tiered environments, right? So you might have a dev environment and then you might have like a staging environment. And then you also might have like a prod environment. Now, when you have all these different environments, you need a way so that you can easily search for specific things that are failing in each environment. Okay, so like, let's make sure that we ship all the prod logs over there, all the staging logs over here. I hope, hope you guys get the picture now. It gets more complicated as you have more environments, you have more machines and stuff like that. And if you have like a blue green setup, you might have different logs for that. So in this scenario, I'm going to talk about the Elk stack, which is one solution for logging. Now, what the Elk stack stands for is you have Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana. Elasticsearch is basically kind of like a database. It's a, I think it's called an inverted index search engine. Basically, it's a way to just store a bunch of data and you can quickly query through all that data. Okay. The L stands for Logstash. Logstash is a tool that you can actually put on your VPSs or on your machines. And that is a thing that's going to aggregate your logs from your various log files. Let's pretend like there's a log file here. So your service is producing logs into a log file. This Logstash is collecting those and parsing them and filtering them and then sending them to your centralized logger. So, and then the K stands for Kibana. This is a nice UI that you can use to dive into your logs. Okay, this is what Kibana is. We're looking at it right now. And what Kibana allows you to do is as various logs are being produced through your system, you can come down here, you can actually start searching through all the things that have been um, created. Now, the great thing about centralized loggers is they usually provide a really nice dashboard for creating graphs, metrics, aggregations, and doing filtering. So for example, if I wanted to come through here and find all of the endpoints in my system that's in a particular environment that has thrown a certain error code or has thrown a status code of like 500, I can do that. So let's just go ahead and find 500 here. Okay, so I want to find all of the logs in my system that have a response status code of 500. I'm going to go ahead and click this plus symbol. And now I can filter through all of my thousands and thousands and thousands of logs and just find the ones that are relevant to what I'm looking for. Okay, you can also search by like strings. So I can say slash hello. I just want to get the logs that are related to my hello endpoint. There's tons of different ways you can do queries and filters and stuff like that. It's super powerful. And this is actually what I use at work. We use the Elk stack at work, which works for the most part. I think it's it's a little bit better than AWS CloudWatch because it's just a nicer UI. But overall, you're going to want to have some type of centralized logger in your production system if you have anything that's more complex than just like one VM hosting your service. 
So this video isn't a demo of Kibana. I just wanted to kind of expose you all to like what a centralized logger is, kind of explain, you know, why is it important? Why do we use them? And uh, if you haven't seen this before, if maybe you don't, you haven't worked in the industry before, or you've worked on a smaller team, which is using like a backend as a service and it has a built-in logger. Like, let me go to Vercel real quick and I'll show you. Vercel has a built-in way to view your logs, right? This is again, kind of like a centralized logger. It's a way to kind of parse through and filter out your logs. Is it as powerful as Kibana? Um, probably not. And then also if you're on the free tier, they have like a max time that your logs can live. Now, depending on the product that you're working or the business that you're working, you may have to retain logs for a much longer time. You might have to retain them for a month, maybe three months. You might have legal requirements that ask you to retain them as long as possible or something like that. In case something happens, you need to go back a couple of years and find uh, when certain bad things happened. Okay, you kind of need that flexibility depending on the project that you're working on, right? So the cool thing about Vercel and other backends as a service is that you have a way to basically hook in a more robust logging system. For example, there's like Datadog. I think Axum's one that Theo talks about a lot. Again, I'm not sponsored by any of this stuff. I think Datadog is another big one that a lot of people use, but these services do end up getting a little bit more pricey. Um, depending on what your needs are. So using the Elk stack is a great way to save on cost if you want to. But I guess I just want to share that with you all. If you haven't understood or heard about the concept of a centralized logger, this is what it is. And this is why it's important. Anyway, that is what a centralized logger is. I definitely recommend you hook one up with your system because it just helps with debugging and also helps with just understanding. It also just helps with analytics. I've used a centralized logger for this icon generator and I use it to know what endpoints are actually being hit by users. So I can come in here and figure out, okay, well, only like 10 users have hit this endpoint over the past two weeks. Maybe this isn't a feature that we care about. So I can just go ahead and delete that feature if I want to, right? So a lot of good use here. I just wanted to kind of share that knowledge and I hope you guys found this video useful. Other than that, I have a Discord channel. You guys are welcome to join. If you want to find a place to hang out or talk to other developers, have a good day and happy coding.